Want to see some revamps of the 1.0 Hero Factory villains that are gonna blow your mind? There's some hilarious ones, there's some hardcore cool ones, but overall all of these are so well built. And they are laid with all sorts of stuff that's gonna definitely inspire you. So let's dive in. All of these brilliant villain revamps, they're built by the wonderfully talented Dylan Meaves, and we've got six of them to show you today. The first one today is Meltdown, and I like this one. It's a bit of a departure from the original set, but it's also not. My favorite details are the additional toxic waste barrels up top. This huge one here in the center, and like the angle that the other two rest at, that's just really cool. Now if you look carefully, you can see Meltdown's original head is still inside that larger container, but there's also the trans red round tiles on this yellow area just down here. So which one is his actual head? Is the classic headpiece still his head? It kind of looks like it's like a brain in a jar now. You know, it could be that kind of concept, or maybe he's a bit more like uh, Mr. Freeze from Batman, where he must wear a chirogenic suit in order to survive. You know, maybe Meltdown's been so exposed to radioactive waste and he has to bathe in it in order to live. So the suit's like keeping him alive now. That's a sick concept, isn't it? I also love these new robot arm additions here, very creepy looking, but also check out the use of this lovely piece, it is called Large Figure Armor Plate Small in yellow. This is such a good piece to smooth out CCBS armor, and it only appeared in one set in yellow, which was this Technic set here. So yeah, if you don't have any of these pieces, whether they're yellow or not, might be worth grabbing some, they are very helpful. Dylan's version of Rotor is just brilliant. You know, the original helicopter rotors on his back, they were pretty cool using those Brutaka blades in black, it looked great. But actually giving him a bunch of Rotor blades from some Technic set, so it really does look like a helicopter, that's both hilarious but also really cool, isn't it? Also, this new flight suit aesthetic is a delight. The fun kind of like joysticks in his hands that would presumably control the spinning blades but also help him move up and down and left and right, that's fun. Also the little platforms on his feet that uh, just sort of flare up at the edges. It's details like this that make the revamp shine. Dylan is thinking very practically here. You know, how would this flight suit work if it was a real thing? What sort of stuff would it need to actually function? You're thinking like that with a real like design thinking mindset. It's gonna lead to mocks that are just more detailed and mocks that have more well-rounded designs and really good like solid character designs. These uh, Gatlin guns on the shoulders here and the new like cockpit piece over Rotor's mask, these are two other fantastic details. But I adore this waist design. The combination of the Ultra Build Darth Maul shoulder armor pieces and this Ultimate Doom mask from the wonderful Ultimate Doom set, then you couple that with some of the armor pieces that we can see on the lower legs of Core Hunter here, the unity between these pieces is exceptional. It's a pleasure to see such incredible shaping here, such a sleek and such a sick design. Kuroda is up next, and I've always loved the spike pieces that came on this set, so it is a real pleasure to see Dylan went and added way more spikes, using a few different spike pieces as well. This like spiky hunch design, it just works so well for the character, and it's great to see Dylan turning that up to 11. A bit of an underrated detail here, I think, is the bionicle armor pieces that we can see on the lower legs down here. The horizontal lines of this piece and the texture that it creates, it pairs so nicely with these other spike pieces. The consistency between those two pieces is exceptional. I also do like the inclusion of some of these Wenua masks for the upper leg design here too. Yeah, this is something really special, a great revamp. And hey, it's great to see Vapor getting some love. They're a character that's a little like underrated and underappreciated sometimes. Now Dylan's really paying attention to the Vapor or water-like qualities of this character. You're giving them like a fun diving helmet design that's uh, covered up that mask just perfectly. Then we've got some other details like these orange pipes and the little like pressure gauges, those nice printed tiles there. And also a few different like hose pieces as well. All of this, it kind of just perfectly demonstrates a water-based power set. I mean, heck, even these neat little blasters, I assume that those shoot out water at, you know, such a fast speed that the water would actually damage you. Although, wouldn't it be funny if they actually just were like bubble blasters and they just shot out a bunch of bubbles? Maybe Vapor's not actually a bad guy, he's just good at parties. It's also great to see some of these printed CCBS armor shells on the lower legs here. You know, mate, there's so much to love about this revamp. Explode is up next, and this is really fun. This is a mock where I think the accessories just make the build. Seeing him carry around a huge container of explosives, and then he's got a cute little lighter to ignite them. Seeing these, you know he's gonna get up to some shenanigans. You get a pretty clear picture of who they are, what their character is, it's perfect. This silver ammo belt across the chest is another nice accessory, and also the cigar. 
That works so well with this mask design. The fact that you can just sort of slot it into the empty space where that mouth is, brilliant. Now, I almost didn't notice it, but the spikes on the shoulders, they don't actually use the spike pieces that come on the original set. Well, okay, the center part does, it uses that piece, but the edges there, they use uh, these very lovely rubber spike pieces in Key Orange. Such a great way to replicate that awesome spike piece that comes on the original set, but with totally different pieces. It's always a nice reminder that if you don't have the specific piece you need, you might be able to use other pieces to replicate it. And mate, this is the best Von Nebula revamp. Now, it's obviously playing on the fact that he has Von at the front of his name, and you're know, turning him into a more dignified gentleman. Sure, this is more of a joke build, but it kind of works too, doesn't it? A big bad evil villain that's rich, pompous and wealthy, a dude with tons of power but no ethics to use them at all. It's a solid idea. Yes, it's playing into some, uh, you know, stereotypes and cliches and things like that, but sometimes that's the perfect thing to do for a villain character. This is just such a solid idea and so many solid techniques have been used to help convey it. These white gloves are a nice touch, especially because the tips of them here, they use this piece from the Shakespeare minifigure. It's a great idea to play with some minifigure accessories to make things even more fancy and dignified. The blue epaulette here, uh, that's working so well. Using some of these Exoforce robot arm pieces in blue, that was the perfect choice to create the amazing shaping of an epaulette. Also, some of these cape and cloth pieces, especially this white cape that's around the neck. I believe this cape was seen in the Range True Star Wars Ultra Build set. Now this piece is cool because it has slightly thicker fur to your more typical cloth piece, so it was perfect to use here. You couple that with this beautiful monocle design using a minifigure magnifying glass, the uh, funny mustache using some of these claw pieces, and also the nice little pocket watch and belt that's around the waist. Oh, and the fact he's got a lovely little ruby ring. Everything here is just so fitting for a pompous villain. And Dylan just packed in all the essential details and accessories and motifs to perfectly replicate that. This mark is absolute perfection. Oh, and the perfection continues because Von Nebula still has his awesome black hole orb on his staff. Very similar to the staff that he had on the original set. But it's nice that they've converted it into more of a, a cane for a dignified gentleman. So, so good. So there you go, that's six revamps of the wonderful 1.0 villain characters. Sadly, Thunder was missing from this lot. Dylan didn't build him. But that's okay. These six villains look phenomenal. So if you want to see more work from Dylan, be sure to check the links in the description below and see all of his fantastic work. Dylan builds so much good stuff. It's worth checking out his other things, leaving a like and giving him a follow. Thanks for watching, guys. Happy building and bye for now.